I see Alan is joining us via video. Yeah, I, I figured I couldn't put it off any longer. Nice to see you. <laughs> I, had, I had to get a haircut today, trim my beard. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and a shave for the first time in about a month. <laughs> How's everything I'm, good? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chairman, you are live. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Um, I like to call the town of Rocky Hill Planning and Zoning Commission Zoom remote meeting of December 16, 2020 to order. Uh, my name is Dimple Desai, Chairman of the Commission. Uh, public speakers who have requested to speak during the public portion of the meeting or any um, or on any of the proposals for commission's action is already given Zoom remote meeting link to participate. Uh, IT staff, John, uh, will uh, assist me in recognizing the public speaker as they are listed on the speaker's list. Um, because we are in a Zoom remote meeting, I'm going to go over some guidelines that I would like everyone to strictly follow so that we have a complete record of our meeting. Uh, there will be a queue of speakers Speakers will be recognized by the IT staff. Uh, all the speakers are requested to keep themselves muted until you participate. Uh, please speak clearly, uh, state your name and address for the record. Uh, you will have two minutes to speak. Uh, please self monitor your time. Uh, these are very important steps as we are participating remotely. So please respect these requests. At this time, I would like to introduce commission members and the staff present for this meeting. I think we have on my left, Commissioner uh, Giuseppe Aglico, myself, Commissioner Alan Marhoz, uh, Commissioner Robbins. Uh, do I see Commissioner Brescia? I don't think so, right? You. She, she was just trying to call me. Oh, okay. So missing is Commissioner Roy Bell, Commissioner Drapeau, and Commissioner Zarelli. Right? So for today, the, the sitting members would be uh, Commissioner Aglico, myself, Commissioner Marhoz. Commissioner Robbins, and if Commissioner Brescia, when joins, she will be participating as well. She'll be seated. So those are our five commissioners. Um, we also have Kim Ritchie, the town planner with us. Uh, for the benefit of commissioners, uh, assume we are sitting in the council chambers. I will start recognizing commissioners from left and go on to right for comments. We avoid multiple conversations at the same time. I will recognize commissioner when it's their turn to speak. Uh, thank you. Uh, commissioner Marhoz, you want to open? You want me to read the public yeah. notice? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Rocky Hill Planning and Zoning Commission. The Rocky Hill Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a virtual public hearing on Wednesday, December 16th, 2020, beginning at 6.30 p.m. to hear the following. One, special permit application, Rocky Hill Board of Education proposing a 17.25 square foot program, programmable scrolling LED changeable copy sign, sign, double sign there, as part of of a brick monument sign to replace the existing sign in the student drop-off <clears throat> drop lane at Rocky Hill High School located at 50 Chapin Avenue in R20 Residential Zoning District ID 19-714. Any person interested in providing public comment should email publicmeetings at rockyhills.gov, noting that you will want to join in or view. You will be provided with a link to attend the Zoom meeting and instructions on how you will participate. Copies available from the following. Contact Rim, uh, Kim Ritchie. Written comments may be directed to Kim Ritchie at kritchie at rockyhillct.gov or planning and zoning 761 Old Main Street, Rocky Hill, Connecticut 06067 
and must be received at least one hour prior to the start of the meeting. People needing special accommodations, please contact Kim Ritchie at RockyHillCT.gov or call 860-258-2761 at least three business days in advance. Dated in Rocky Hill, Connecticut, this third day and tenth day of December 2020, Planning and Zoning Commission, Dimple Desai, Chairman, Thomas Roybal, Secretary. Thank you, Commissioner. Hello, uh, Mr. Chairman, Guy Drapo, logging on now. Sorry, I'm late. Yes, yes, so I was going to recognize you. So uh, the fifth member who, who is seated would be Guy Drapo, because I still, I think Commissioner Brescia is still not here. So the seated members would be Commissioner Drapo, Commissioner Aglico, myself, Commissioner Mahos, and Commissioner Robbins. Um, all right, uh, let's open up the uh, public hearing. Uh, do we have, I think we have to read in the uh, item 1A. Right, or? I think we covered that. Okay. In the public announcement. I, I could do it again, it's no big deal. Um, <clears throat> item one, public hearing at 6.30 p.m. A, special permit application, Rocky Hill Board of Education proposing a 17.25 square foot programmable scrolling LED, changeable copy sign as part of a brick monument sign to replace the existing sign of the student drop-off lane at Rocky Hill High School, located at 50 Chapin Avenue in an R20 residential zoning district, ID 19-714. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, do we have the proposer to provide some background on the application? There will be one. Okay. one. Ron is present, yes. Could we unmute, um, is there a way to unmute Ron's microphone? At the bottom left corner of your screen. I think he's trying to find, yeah. Here I am. Let me lower it. Are you on a speaker or a speaker phone or something like that? We're in a summary. All right, is this better? <laughs> Bear with me. Let me come back in. Now, can you hear me now? Perfect, yes. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right, thank you everybody for, um, um, for um, hearing um, our um, request for a digital sign in front of Rocky Hill High School. Um, I've actually never sat in a, zo a zoning meeting before, so if you, if you walk me through this, I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions you have but I can give you a little rundown of, of, of the overall project if you'd like. Yeah. Um, so as stated, um, we, we are looking to put a um, programmable changing copy sign in the current location of where the Rocky Hill sign, uh, Rocky Hill High School sign is now. The um, intent is to um, offer um, school activity notices and um, event notices for the high school community, but also to utilize it in a similar fashion as the other digital signs in town for um, town events, and also emergency um, notifications and, and the like um, for the town as well.
Are there any other questions um, to follow up with that? Oh, so are you done with your presentation? What, what we do is uh, just go through the whole presentation you have, and then we will open up uh, uh, the questions to the public first, and then we'll go through the commissioners. Okay, um, I do not have anything available. I, I'm not sure how I would present anything through this format. Um, okay. All right. Um, Are you able to review the special permit criteria? Could you read the, do you have that? Yes, let me pull that out. Yep. Hold on one second. Okay. So um, I have a special permit criteria in front of me. Um, you want me to read through each of the um, answer I provided to um, in the application? Uh, yes, please. Um, okay, so special permit criteria, um, item A, suitable location for the use. Um, item one, the location and size of the site, um, the nature and intensity of the operations involved in or conducted in connection with the use and the location of the site with respect to streets giving access to it are such that the use shall be in harmony with the appropriate and orderly development in the district in which it is located and shall promote the welfare of the town. So the monument will be located in the traffic island um, at the parent student drop off location and will be visible to traffic on Chapin Avenue and the high school parking drop off areas. The monitor will be used to broadcast school, community, town and emergency information. Um, item two, the proposed use shall be of such location, size, and character that, in general, will be in harmony with the appropriate and orderly development of the district in which it is proposed to be situated and shall not tend to depreciate the value of property in the neighborhood and shall not be detrimental to the orderly development of adjacent properties in accordance with the zoning classifications of such properties. The monument will be situated parallel to Chapin Avenue in the same location as the existing sign and will not hinder line of sight entering or exiting the student drop off lane and will have dim capability for operation after dark to avoid additional light pollution to surrounding area. Um, item B, appropriate improvements. Um, number one, the design elements of the proposed development will be attractive and suitable in relation to the site characteristics, the style of other buildings in the immediate area and the existing and probable future character of the neighborhood in which it is located. The monument will fit the design of the high school and will be consistent with other community messaging signs in, in other town owned buildings, which are located by town hall and fire station. Number two, the location, nature, and height of buildings, walls, and fences, planned activities, and the nature and extent of landscaping on the site will be such that the use shall not hinder or discourage the appropriate development and use of adjacent land and buildings or impair the value thereof. The existing landscaping um, will be maintained by the town of Rocky Hill, um, by the, actually by the park, the park and Rec Department. Um, Number three, the proposed use of activity shall have no adverse effect upon the neighboring area resulting from the use of signs, exposed artificial lights, colored lights of any nature, flashing lights, loudspeakers, or other noise-making devices. Um, the auto dimming sensor will reduce light emitted from the LED monitor during evening hours and will not introduce more light produced from the parking lot area. Um, number four, in cases where it is proposed to convert a structure designed and built originally for other uses, the structure is adaptable to the proposed use from the point of view of public health and safety. Um, I felt that was non applicable. Um, item C, suitable transportation conditions. Um, both items number one and two in that and three are all, um, I believe, non applicable. 
um, item D, adequate public utilities and services. Um, both one and two under this um, heading are uh, not applicable. And um, E, um, all three items are also not applicable. And um, long-term viability, um, adequate provisions have, has been made for the sustained maintenance of the proposed development structures, streets, and other improvements. The monument and LED mount, again, will be, um, will be ma maintained by the Rocky Hill Public Schools Facilities Department. Um, item G, um, consistency with overall objectives. Um, these were all not applicable. And unfortunately, I believe I'm reading an, an older document. Kim, am I accurate in saying that? Uh, Ron, you started off re reading, this is Bill Puro. Can I say something? Can you hear me? This is Bill Puro. Yeah, so what I will do is I will ask uh, for public participation. So please let uh, Ron finish his presentation and I'll come back. I was back just trying to, to help him, that's all. Yep, yep. so I'll, I'll come okay. back to you, yeah. Ron, you had any question about? I'm just reviewing one item because I did submit this twice, if I'm correct. And I need to make sure that that is the accurate because we did have some additions um, to that special permit criteria. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking for my most recent, um, if you bear with me for just a second. I'm trying to split my screen here so I can compare the two. Ron, you revised A2 and B1. Yeah, I'm looking for that now. Thank you. Uh, I'm having trouble pulling that up on my laptop. I did it from my work computer and I'm, I'm on my laptop at home. So please, I apologize for the... That's fine. Okay, I believe A2 was revised. I don't think I have the proper document, I apologize. The A, the A2 and B1 that you read, um, is the one I have. There was one prior to that where it, the, there was an NA not applicable. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I, did, so I did read the proper one. Okay. That's correct. You did read the proper one, Ron. Okay, okay. thank uh, you. Bill, Bill, if you could, uh, the chairman will recognize you when it's time. There's a public portion of the, of the public hearing. This is, okay. this is the time between staff and the applicant and the commission, uh, after which time the chairman will call for public All right. I was just trying to be helpful, Kim. I know, I know. Okay, so I do believe that is the complete special permit that I have submitted. All right. Uh, what I would like to do is open uh, the floor to uh, the public. Um, the first I have is Cynthia Hunt. Yes, good evening, commissioners. Um, I have a statement prepared I'd like to read. Shall I start? Yeah, if you uh, recognize your name and uh, address, please. Certainly, Cynthia Hunt, 216 Parsonage Street, Rocky Hill. Yep, go ahead. 
All set? Yep, yep, thank you. To begin, as one of many neighboring property owners, I ask you to deny the special permit application for a programmable scrolling LED changeable copy sign at the high school. The neighbors of the high school and middle school have put up with many challenges to our quiet residential properties in recent years. The increased traffic, the congestion and air pollution from vehicles idling, the litter that makes its way into our yards, the lights, noise, and loudspeakers from the fields, all of these have dramatically increased in recent years. Additionally, the late high school renovation has greatly contributed to significant light pollution and tremendous, tremendous energy consumption paid for by us taxpayers. I ask each of you to stop by any evening at six o'clock, nine o'clock, midnight, or three in the morning to see for yourselves the dramatic lighting that shines through our windows 365 days a year. The proposed signage is yet another blatant disregard for the quiet residential neighborhood we are trying to preserve. I want to remind you that these school properties are nestled in the center of a neighborhood of modest homes that all back up on the school properties. In contacting town and school officials regarding the invasive lighting currently infiltrating my home, my concerns and requests have not been addressed and resolved. The school's LED lighting shines brightly into my second floor bedroom each and every night of the year. I have been told that the lights are directed downward, but if that were truly the case, the second floor bedroom would not have bright light shining through the window across my pillow. I have asked that a shade be placed on the lamp posts, and yet no action has been taken. Illustrates is a blatant disregard for a spirit of cooperation and collaboration and for the residential zoning in place for our neighborhood. This is not a commercial zone. The proposed lighted scrolling sign is one more example of the town's attempt to commercialize our neighborhood. This type of sign is best suited for positioning along the Silas Dean Highway within a commercial zone, similar to the one already located at the intersection of routes 160 and 99. Enough already. We property owners do not want any further illumination nor commercialization of our neighborhood. The school year is 180 days. We homeowners occupy our houses 365 days a year. The schools are lit up like Times Square, exceeding any need for safety lighting. Lights are not dimmed or diminished in the later hours of the night. No further lighting of any kind is warranted or appropriate for this area. I implore you, Planning and Zoning Commissioners, to reject this proposal and deny this special permit, to preserve the value and integrity of our abutting properties, and to demonstrate a respect and consideration for those of us who live here and wish to keep our neighborhood residential and not commercial. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Uh, I move on to uh, William Bureau. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm very much in agreement with the last speaker and- uh, Can you please rec uh, have your uh, address please? Oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm 57. My name is William Puro at 57 Chapin Avenue. And I am directly in front of this sign, right in front of the high school. Um, is that good? Can I start? Yes, please. All right. Um, I have a lot of points to make. I'm going to try to do this. I won't be able to make them all in a two-minute period. I hope I get some time to talk later. I'm going to say up front right now that I am upset and against any plans to place a large, bright, flashing display directly in front of my yard. Uh, the sign is adding light pollution and information pollution to my front yard, which has never been there before. You know, we haven't had anything like that for 60. I've been here for 60 years. I don't want to see that entering now. Um, it will be annoying and distracting. Um, I have a lot more to say about that, the hardship it's going to cause. 
I'll be living here like a recluse with the drapes drawn. Lights will be pouring in. Um, I know it's going to be dimmed at night, but I don't think it's going to be dim enough. Um, also, I don't know why we have to place a sign facing Chapin Avenue. If you think about it, and I want you to come by anytime and look at where it will be placed. There is no one or any audience in front of a display that is facing Chapin Avenue. No one can see it. Think about it. It's five feet from the road. I am the only one in front of it. You will be wasting money on hardware and electricity to power this 24 hours a day. Again, cars will not see it as they go by. They won't see it until they're right in front of it. There's a 90 degree viewing angle on this. Um, I drive by this blue sign that's here all the time. I can't read it until I'm pulling in my driveway and I'm right in front of it. I hope you get the point on that. Um, in regard to property depreciation, which was just read about, Ron just read about it in paragraph A2, I think it was. Um, I don't care if it sounds cliche, but I am worried that the property value will be impacted. My property value will be impacted and that the number of interested buyers down the road will be less. Um, let me just say right now, because uh, I can go on and on. I have a lot of material to cover. I hope I get a chance either tonight or in another meeting. Um, I have a beautiful spot here in front of the high school. I enjoy it and it's been peaceful here in front of the school for over 60 years. Uh, m my family and I have been here for over 60 years. The light and the constant messaging will disrupt that peacefulness. Like I said before, uh, I'm certain that I have to live in this house with the drapes drawn to keep the annoyance and distraction out of my view. Um, in reference to paragraph A2, location, size and character, is stated those terms. This display is not suited for the small patch of island in front of the school. To me, this is an unnecessary enhancement. The sign is not in harmony with the section, this section of Chapin Avenue or the school itself. Um, you say it will be consistent with other community messaging signs in town. Uh, that to me is frightening. Uh, it, it stated that this, uh, the sign will be consistent with other community message, messaging signs at other town buildings. The three designs are not, those three designs at the firehouse in the center of Rocky Hill, you know, corner of Elm and Silas Steen, they're, they're not monuments, they're just marquees, uh, you know, displays, industrial displays on a brick wall. I'd hate to see that here. Um, th th that's not what I would like to see in front of this attractive high school. And I mean, this, this school is attractive. After you guys, you, you, the Board of Education, the Town of Rocky Hill got through with the renovation, the front of it now is really beautiful. It looks academic. It looks like a campus at night when the lights are on. Um, and this kind of display that I saw in the depiction, the, the color display, is, is um, not attractive. If you go onto the Dactronics website, you'll see examples of very attractive displays, which we could talk about later. Um, I can talk about that with Ron. Um, let's see. Um, and what I'm trying to say is right now the school has a clean academic look and appearance at night. This marquee that you want to put up is not going to enhance that. And I'm calling it a marquee. It is not an, a, a monument. Using the term monument is just an embellishment to try and make us think that this is going to be a, a, a good addition to the front. Now I'm willing to work with you on something there. I have some ideas. My background is engineering, uh, electrical engineering. I, I understand how to solve problems, come up with ideas and solutions. 
Uh, I'm convinced you could place something there that would add to the academic look. But my point is, I, uh, I cannot tolerate uh, uh, a large LED scrolling display, flashing information and lighting into my yard 24 hours a day. Uh, I'm gonna stop there, but I want you to know I have a lot more to say to address this situation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, I will come back to you, but if, if you can concisely uh, bring out your points, that would be great. Because I cannot have half an hour um, you know, uh, comment on, on the proposal. So I would please request that, you know, in the meantime, if you can just point out your pointers, what the problems are, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, well, I just, I just did. I, I can't understand it if you're not getting it. No, now, you said, excuse if, me, you, you said you have some more. So that's what I'm saying. I, I'm willing to give you the floor, but if you, whatever you have left, if you can summarize it in, in you know, a couple of minutes, that would be great when you get the floor again. Well, That's what I'm saying. Uh, if you are done, it's fine. If you, if you, are, if you have summarized your- uh, Why don't you come back to me? What was that? Can you come back to me? I will come back, but what I'm saying is while I am, you know, while the other speaker is speaking, if you can summarize your findings, that would be good because I cannot, have you know more than two three minutes go on so thank you uh now i will recognize the third speaker diane marticelli yes can you hear me yes yes okay diane martinelli 63 chapin avenue um i just wanted to ask if uh because there's not a lot of information being given on this application can i just ask a few quick questions before i provide my comments because i know that we have to be limited with the comments and i was just wondering if my questions could be outside of that limitation uh yes go ahead okay is this going to be the only public hearing for this proposed sign will there uh, um is there gonna be a decision made at the end of tonight or is there gonna be a subsequent hearing? That will depend. Uh, you know, we, we don't know right now, uh, but that will depend. Uh, I can't say that right now. What, what are the factors that it's gonna depend on? What do you mean? It, it, it would be, you know, again, uh, the board, uh, the, the commission looks at the proposal as submitted and what is allowed by the zoning regulations. So depending on you know, uh, what has been presented, um, the concerns that are, that are raised by, by the residents and uh, you know, how uh, the school uh, addresses those uh, concerns. And again, also what concerns the commission has based on the hearing. So okay. th that's what it all depends. And this is a standard process. So that's how every other proposal goes by, so. Um, because of the short notice of the hearing, would there be an opportunity for any of the residents uh, making public comment tonight to provide uh, some further documentation uh, relative to certifying facts and opinions that are, that are being presented here today? I will, I will have our staff speak to that, but I believe, uh, you know, the notice period was as per the regulations, but I will let Kim talk about it. Okay. Um, Kim, oh, uh, Diane? Yes. It's uh, Kim Ritchie, town planner. Uh, the notices did go out per the um, mm -hmm. zoning regulations. Uh, yes. They were sent out by um, people within 500 feet of the subject property did receive a copy of the legal notice and they were, uh, the legal notice did uh, state on it. If somebody wanted a copy, they could certainly request it. Uh, meeting packets, uh, this was actually our first meeting. We got a meeting packet up on the, um, 
website and we were to do so at least 24 hours uh, in advance. We had, um, we had a contact, uh, our IT department had to contact the vendor on that, but that was up uh, with 24 hours advance notice. Um, so that was up on the website. I did send copies of this uh, application, uh, the application, what Ron LaMontagne read into the record, the uh, plan, as well as the uh, colored rendering of the sign. I did send it out to at least six people. I don't happen to have their email addresses here with me. I'm at home uh, right now, um, but I did send it out to at least six people. Uh, the three people that are speaking this evening, I did speak to them on the phone. I, and I believe, um, I know two of you did get it um, or, or sent it. Um, so um, as far as notice going out, uh, the agenda was published and was posted on the website um, mm -hmm. in a timely manner. Um, it was dated no. the first of this month. Uh, today is the 16th. Um, so we have 21 day deadline uh, prior to the meeting. So the agenda got out in a timely manner also. So there was plenty of notice. As the chairman said, it is up to the commission as a whole, the five voting members, whether or not the public hearing will be continued or not. Um, and um, they will, if they do decide to continue the public hearing, they will have to state on the record why the public hearing is being continued. It will have a more narrowed focus and people that do speak, if there is a continued public hearing, will only be allowed to address those items. So I don't know mm -hmm. if that helps answer your question. Yes, um, but what I was really trying to, uh, I, maybe I didn't make it clear, would we be, uh, any of the speaker uh, speakers tonight making public comment, would we be able to submit any documentation after tonight relative to certifying facts and opinions that are being presented that would be utilized before a final decision is made? If a, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, if a public hearing is left open, you may be able to you will be able to. If it's about the reasons why the public hearing is continued and only those reasons. Uh, if the public hearing is closed, there will be no more opportunity for public comment after this meeting. Unless the Board of Ed has a process to approve the sign and that we have to ask Ron through our, our chairman this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I just um, just want to ask, uh, Mr. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Lamontag, is that how you pronounce his name, Ron? Lamontag. That that's. Can I can I request one thing? Um, please go ahead with your with your questions or or your concerns, and then. Uh, we will come back and, uh, you know, if, if you have a question there, uh, when commission is done, uh, we will bring, uh, you know, Ron in to, to explain uh, whatever concerns you have. So okay. I, I would request that we go ahead and, and uh, have, uh, you know, get your comments in. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I, I just want to call attention to section A2 of the special permit criteria. I'm just gonna read just a little bit out loud that the proposed use shall be of such location, size and character that in general, it will be in harmony with the appropriate and orderly development of the district in which it is proposed. Okay, et cetera, et cetera. Now also uh, under your own regulations under section 7C that has to do with signage of the town regulations, it states, encourage or require appropriately designed and located signs that serve a legitimate function and that are consistent with the neighboring characteristics. So I took quite a bit of time uh, and put into this of the location of the other three signs. The one on Silestine Highway across from the donut shop, I think that's location is great. It's a commercially zoned district. The appearance of the sign is suitable for the development in that location. 
It's also really great because when you're stopped at the light, you can read it. It doesn't present any safety hazards. The sign on New Britain Avenue, the one that's in front of the firehouse, the firehouse is also commercially zoned. I know that there's houses on the other side that are residential, but it's all mixed in with businesses across the street and on the same side as the firehouse. A lot of retail businesses. The sentiment one would get driving down uh, or up New Britain Avenue in the vicinity of the firehouse is that this is not strictly a residential area. Um, that particular part of New Britain Avenue is more commercial than residential. The sign that's located on Main Street in front of the firehouse is zoned residential. But just a short distance down the road, there's two gas stations, a strip of businesses where there's an insurance company, barber shop, hair salon. Main Street isn't strictly zoned residential. Chapin Avenue is unique from all those three other locations in town. Chapin Avenue is strictly residential. There's no businesses located on this street. If you drive down this street, the sentiment that you're gonna get is that this is a really lovely residential street. And also, Chapin Avenue does not have the same amount of traffic, heavy traffic that those other three locations have. Now, Ron said that this particular sign was going to have school activities and news and also town activities and information. Well, let's just understand that when you look at those other three signs that are in town, the information that's being broadcasted about town activities is redundant. It's the same thing at all three locations. So I'm assuming that this particular sign, the town information is going to be of the same nature as the other three signs. So the audience, the primary audience that you're trying to reach is teachers and parents. That's, that's what, what, what uh, I'm getting. Um, it's obvious that this sign is not appropriate for Chapin Avenue. It's not in harmony with the residential nature of this street. I didn't have enough time to get a real estate professional for a written opinion, but I know there's two people in town that I'm thinking of. These two people have real estate businesses. They have over 30 plus years experience and they're well-respected, well-known for their knowledge. I'm positive if I hired one of them to give a written statement about the marketability of the homes in the near vicinity of an electronic sign that they would say that it would have a negative impact on value. This would be a tremendous hardship if we ever tried to sell our homes in the future. Um, and, and, I, and I would like to be able to provide such documentation before a decision is made in support that the, that, uh, that the sign would be in violation of section A2. Um, the other hardship for the homeowners is being near an electronic sign uh, is section B3, where it says the proposed use shall have no adverse effect upon the neighboring area resulting from exposed or artificial lights, flashing lights, et cetera. You know, I, I just want to point out here that noise and vis visual intrusions are usually buffered where there's residential homes abutting commercial type influences. Because of the nature of the sign and its broadcasting information, that cannot be done. LED lights penetrate through windows and they're very intrusive. And you know, I have to add here, I drove down New Britain Avenue and that sign that's in, in front of the firehouse because I think it's Christmas time. I just couldn't believe what I saw. There was intense, very intense blue lights flashing on that sign. And when I looked at it, I just couldn't believe how intense it was. And I was thinking, you, you gotta be kidding. You're gonna, I mean, that kind of intensity coming through somebody's window. I mean, this sign is across from the front of our houses, not the side, not the back. We're gonna be exposed to this during the day. That's unreasonable and unfair hardship. And, um, you know, on a side note, I, I do have to tell you something. I called this, the town of Rocky Hill High School and I spoke with a professional, a person that, that works every day with kids, with the students there, and intimately knows about their habits and what's going on with the administration in the school. And this person was extremely candid 
with me. We had a very nice conversation. And the first thing that we talked about was how do the students and the parents get their information? And this person told me the students and parents are extremely attached to their phones. The Rocky Hill High School has a website where all the information that they need to know is posted on the website. And I was shocked that this person told me that that sign is unnecessary because all the information they get is from their phones. And they told me they're not even gonna look at it because they're so attached to their phones today. Um, the buses where the majority of the kids get off the bus, just I, I'm here, I see how many cars uh, the parents dropping off the kids. It's nowhere near the amount of kids that are dropped off on the bus. They're not even gonna see the sign because they're in the back of the school where they're being dropped off. Um, it, it's, it's a non-essential sign. Um, the, part of the, the part of the information that's gonna be broadcasted for town news, that's redundant for there's, uh, there's three other signs that's gonna tell you that. The only thing that the sign is gonna tell you that's different is school activities and they get that through their phone. And, um, you know, I, 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 I just wanna conclude that I have a solution. I have a win-win situation. Please consider putting a solid plaque on the front of this monument and an LED sign on the back. Because when the parents drop off the students, they're gonna see the back of the sign. They're not gonna see the front of the sign. And whoever passerbys are on the front of the sign, town residents or whoever goes by, that's just redundant of what's at the other three locations. You don't really need that. And if you keep a solid plaque on the front of the sign, the homeowners won't have, it won't create a hardship for the homeowners. And you'll still have your sign. You'll still be able to transmit the information on the back side of the sign. You know, I, I've been a resident in Rocky Hill for 50 years and I love Chapin Avenue. I'm asking you not to put this as a two-sided LED sign. I don't want, I, I still want my home to be a place that I love to come home to. And I'm so afraid that if you do that, that's all gonna be lost. I mean, if we try to sell our homes, would you wanna buy a home across the street from an electronic sign? And and, and, and I'm positive that if you let me, uh, if you allow me to submit documentation from one of the, the real estate professionals in town, that they would say that it would affect the marketability of our homes and that it would be in violation of special permit criteria A2. So I, I'm just, please meet us halfway, put a, pla a solid plaque on the front and an LED sign on the back. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll go back to uh, Mr. Puro and, and you have two minutes, please. I'm going to monitor it. So please summarize your comments. All right. Um, I'm going to uh, reiterate something that Diane just said. If the intended audience is the, and I know it is, the intended audience are the drop-off parents and the students. If that's the case, then one LED sign on the school side is, is what you, should, you can put up. I do not want to see an LED sign on the other side facing Chapin Avenue. Cars will slow down to read it and cause possible accidents. It just doesn't make sense to put a sign facing Chapin Avenue. Um, I have a question. Can, will, there, will there be any advertising showing up am, among these messages? All right, so we will address that when the commissions uh, take the questions up. All right.
I also think that the positioning of the sign parallel to the road is going to cause issues with snow removal. There's a lot of things that need to be considered here. I think there's a lot more thought that has to go into this project before you make a decision. And, and we need to know what your final decision is going to be. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop right there. Others have covered issues that I uh, intended, so I will not repeat them right now. All right, thank you very much. Um, now I'm going to uh, move on to commissioners. So I'll start from my uh, from my left. If uh, Commissioner Drapeau. Hi there. Yeah, I've heard a, heard a lot of very thoughtful comments from the from the audience. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, I, I had a question about lumens. Is the current sign have? Do we have a stated lumen at night that the that the the current sign is is uh, showing at night? And what is that compared to the proposed new sign that they want to put up? That's my first question. And second, uh, why is the sign facing? perpendicular to, to the road and not uh, along Chapin Avenue. And third and finally, why not the other street where the buses go, which is more of a main road? Those are my three, those are my three topics of conversation. I'm not sure if that's appropriate, but that's what, I, that's what was going through my head. Ron, do you want to address it? Because we're yes. going to go one by one. So, <clears throat> so currently um, the, the, the Rocky Hill High School sign is not lit at night. Um, there's no lighting um, there. So the lumens um, are, are, are going to change, uh, absolutely, um, with, with the addition of the um, LED sign. Um, the perpendicular is really about fit. Um, the, uh, the, the island is, is somewhat narrow and to get something in, and I, I know it's not ideal, it'd be very tight to construct it um, um, in the other direction, um, not impossible. It, it can it can be done, and we can absolutely look at that. Um, but it, it it is a tight fit. And your um, question as to why there um, that's where the proposed sign was um, originally as part of the high school renovation. Um, the electric the electrical and the data is already run out to that location as part of the renovation, and that sign was value engineered out of the project. Um, and now that um, we, we're able to do something there, that it, it was going in that current location where the proposal was originally as part of the renovation. All right, thank you. Any further questions of Commissioner Drapov? Uh No, not at this time, thank you though. Thank you. Uh, I'll move on to Commissioner Glico. Um. He basically answered the same questions I had. I, I was a little concerned that they're putting it at um, parallel instead of perpendicular to the road. I don't think there's there's enough traffic there to really justify it, seeing it. Um, also, it, it being parallel, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to read anything. The majority of the student, the majority of the people reading it would be the students or anybody in the school property. So, is other locations have been have have been looked at uh, or proposals made for the signage as well as the one-sided sign like like request like was requested um the the um a one-sided sign is is possible the the the, uh, the idea of having it in the requested direction also is because of the the stopped traffic um during drop off and pickup times. So there, there is an opportunity to see it from the school side during those times, because we do have, that is where we have the most traffic on Chapin. Um, but like, we, like I just explained, it, it is possible to, to turn the sign. Um, it's a little more work, but we can get it done. But we've also looked um, recently because we, I did have a conversation with town engineering about, about this exact um, situation. 
and there's a, a location further north um, just by the entrance to the teacher parking lot um, where we'd be able to um, fairly inexpensively tie into the existing pre-run electrical, cut it short and do it in that location. We'd lose the data portion because the other direction, but we, we can find a workaround. So that would be another way so that we, we don't have to have it. Um, we, we can actually have the two-sided um, so you can view it in the south direction and the northbound direction. Um, that, that's another area we can do it. Would, would that location be um, west of the sidewalk? So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be within the grass strip because it's actually, it's, it's, it's prior. So it's, it's, it's close. It's, it's in a different Island um, between Chapin. It's not actually part of that one drop off Island. It's much closer to the entrance of the high school. Um, parking area, right. so um, so it, it would not be it, it would be in a grassy area, um, but not the same grassy area. Um, so right now, it's proposed to be in the town right away. So Correct. Are you, would that be moved um, on the back side of the sidewalk so we'd be on the school property? It would be on the school property, but it would be on the. I'm trying to picture. It would be on the. It would be on the school side of the sidewalk it, it would be closer to the parking lot in that in that in that respect okay so it would it would it would, it would be on the uh west side of the park of, of, of the uh sidewalk and another note uh was brought up if it was if it was made perpendicular to um the location that is now how how would plowing snow if it was say we had a heavy sleet snow um, and the plows came through, I've seen mailboxes get taken down. How would this LED hold up to a winter storm? Well, it would, it would be, it would be high enough off the ground where it should not, um, it, it should not. And this is also a consideration of why we were replacing it the other direction, because it would, it wouldn't take, it wouldn't take the, the, the hit of the snow plow snow as, as harsh as if it, if it, if it was in, um, in the other direction. Um, that is a consideration. Um, unfortunately, that that's where the electrical was 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 in place, and that's why we we chose that location. Um, the, the, so it's if 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 this was all brand new and we had to run new electrical somewhere else, we would not be selecting this location. Absolutely not. We try and place it in another area, closer to the school proper. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll move on to Commissioner Morehouse. Okay, I, I really don't have any questions. I have some comments, but um, we shouldn't be expressing opinions during a public hearing, so I'll wait. If we don't recess this hearing, I'll discuss it during the agenda item in the regular meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Robbins. Okay, um, just real quick. Um, so how did you come to the the determination that the the sign wouldn't be adding any additional light to the to the surrounding properties because because i thought i just heard you say that it it actually would well it, it, it would add more light than the existing sign does that was the, the original question um because the original sign that's in place now has no lighting on it at all it's obviously going to be more light than what's there now um, it will absolutely not be any brighter than what the parking lot lighting is providing now in that area. Um, because of the um, after dark dimming capabilities, um, it will dim in, in the night hours as well. It's only going to be bright during the day to, to counter any sunlight and that sort of thing. Okay. But will there be new additional lighting adjacent to and closer to residences in the area? And will that lighting be of different colors? Um, it's going to be similar to a TV screen, um, so it would not be. Um, it, it, you know, it, so if if it's a color, if it's a if it's a if it's a color script, it's obviously going to have color. Yes, it will not be black and white. Okay. And then, um, it, it, in regards to the special permit criteria. Um, it, under consistency with overall objectives for um, item number one, uh, 
the, your answers I see here are in red. The, the, the black is the criteria. So the proposed use or activity does not conflict with the purposes of the regulations as amended. There, there's no answer on that one. Was there a reason you didn't answer that? Let me pull that up. I'm sorry, what number was that? G1. Um, I, I don't have, I don't, I do, I do not have an answer for that. Um, I did not see that it was going to conflict with the, um, with the regulations, um, that, that are written. Okay. I'm just not seeing an answer. That's all just a technical issue. Yep. Yes. Um, and then the other, the other, uh, G3, it says the proposed user activity adequately addresses the health, safety, and welfare of the public in general and the immediate neighborhood in the area. Um, there was a comment made earlier uh, about the orientation of the sign. Um, and unlike the other signs in town, when you're driving by them, the way they're angled is you can see them through the front windshield of your car. You have a number of young student drivers going down Chapin Avenue who are easily distracted on their own. Uh, if they wanna read what's on the sign, are they gonna see it through the front windshield of their car or are they gonna to have to take their eyes off the road and turn right and to look at the sign? Uh, yeah, that, 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 that is a valid question and that's why we did research um, relocating it so that we could put it perpendicular. Um, you know, that was done after the application was filed. Um, and it's something that we, we absolutely address and change the direction of that sign to avoid that um, exact condition. Okay. Uh, those are my questions. Thank you. I just have a couple of questions. Um, so I'm just trying to understand. So when the light is uh, on, uh, how far can it penetrate? Can it go through somebody's window? Uh, or, you know, uh, for example, if you have a flashlight and if it's a powerful flashlight that firemen or whoever would use, if you, if you point it towards window, it can go through window and you can see in the house. Uh, is this something like that, or oh. or it has a short distance of of uh, light going through? Um, it's not it's not to the brightness that it would it would project. I mean, you would see it as you're driving it down the road, mm -hmm. um, and the closer you get to it, the more you'd be able to read it. Um, it's not a penetrating light, and especially in the evening hours, we would be you know it would be automatically dimmed. Um, as a side note, the board is also programmable so that we can actually have it off during certain hours. So if we decided to say that, um, you know, eight o'clock in the evening is a good time to shut it off and we don't turn it again on again until the start of school the next day, we have that capability. And, and that was my other question, um, uh, which you answered, reduced hours depending on the message. So, um, you know, again, as, as we heard in the comment section from the public, uh, th there are messages, you know, regarding the town activities that apply to the general public out there. So, and if, if this is especially for the parents and kids and high school related, uh, you know, probably you can reduce the hours of, uh, you know, the operation and probably, you, you know, uh, I don't think parents or kids will be driving at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock to see what the message is. So Correct. it looks like uh, there is a possibility of uh, reduced hours that may work out. Abs and, abs absolutely. And, and the, uh, the issue of light penetrating can be avoided if it's not on after a certain time. Yes, it would, it would not, and it would not penetrate more than anything of the surrounding parking lot lighting. Um, it's going to, it's that the parking lot lighting is definitely going to overshadow um, the, the sign for um, residual lighting. Um, the other question I had was, is it possible to have like a down angle? So, you know, rather than 
you are facing it at straight, uh, if it's a down angle, does that make the sign or illumination any different uh, for, for, you know, in terms of penetrating or, or people seeing from the houses or windows? I, I would have to get some um, clarification from the vendor on that. Um, it is a flat screen. So, um, you know, if you're sitting in your living room watching a flat screen TV, different different positions will, 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 will show differently. Um, I'm not sure how that would um, show the image, but um, I can absolutely get clarification on that. Yeah, and, and, and my, my, the question was related to if it's a, in my example that I gave before, if it's, if it act, if it's acting like a flashlight, that's, right. that's when if you have a little tilted, now your, your, your straight vision is, is reduced and, and it doesn't penetrate. So th th that's why I asked that question. So. Understood. Um, uh, uh, how about uh, the commercial um, messaging? No, there, the will, there, there will not be any advertising. Board policies do not um, permit any advertising on school property. Um, we don't allow it for our sports teams on the on the base. Not allowed um, any any advertising of any sort. Um, it, it'll strictly be messages related to school and town related activities. All right. Uh, what else? I'm just trying to see comments. Excuse me. Could I add? This is Bill Pio. Excuse me, please. Yes. Yeah. Let me let me finish. Uh, okay, go ahead. Um, uh, okay, so I think I'm I'm done with the questioning. Um, uh, Commissioners, any commissioners have any other questions that you would like to ask based on what you heard? All right, I'm, I'm going to make an exception. We don't usually do this, but Mr. Puro, just one question. Well, um... Ron just said there is not going to be any advertising. Now, I'm against a sign facing Chapin Avenue. It's going to cause accidents, but uh, I want to make sure there wouldn't, you don't intend to put any advertising on the Chapin Avenue side, right? You can't put them on. I know you won't put any advertising on the school side. Does that mean we might see advertising on the Chapin Avenue yeah. side? Absolutely not. There will not be any advertising involved with this sign in any way, shape, or form. Okay, Ron. That's what I thought. Now, look, I have one more I got to bring up. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. I don't think this is in. Okay, I think. I, I is think right. Uh, Mr. Puro, I think you had your chance. I gave you two chances. And as I said, I made an exception in allowing you to speak after commissioners spoke. Uh, I went above and beyond. I, I respected your wishes and I gave you one question. Now I cannot let, it would be unfair to other participants and other citizens if they cannot participate and I just give you opportunity to, uh, you know, go on and Fine, ask. this is serious so, and I, I'm not giving, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. So, so again, uh, I think when can I, when can I ask this question? Is there an, any other Mr. Chairman, this is out of order. Yes. I right. agree. I agree. Um, Mr. Right. Puro, you have to recognize, otherwise I'm going to ask the IT to shut off your, your uh, put, put your, put your uh, uh, right. mic on mute. Because I'm as sorry. I said, I have given you sufficient time. I gave you two times. And I even told you before, you should have summarized your questions because we do not do this. And I also gave you a third time and one question, but I think uh, I have to stop now. So uh, if commissioner ma commission members don't have any further questions, I would like to have a motion. 
Um, I'll move to close the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, item two, which is the public. Uh, anyone who is here um, who would like to talk about anything that's not on the agenda today? And I don't see I have got any requests. So um, I would like to move on to item three, the consent agenda. Um, I move to approve the consent agenda, which is the minutes and actions from November 18th, 2020, with uh, a couple of technical corrections. Um, the minutes indicate that Ron Robbins was a full member and that um, Nancy Brescia was an alternate, but they hadn't been approved, been appointed by the town council until a week or two later. So technically Ron would be, should be listed as, a, as an alternate and Nancy as a, uh, I don't know what term we use, guest, visitor, me yes. a member of the public. Yep. And then of course, as of tonight, then Ron is a full member and Nancy is a, uh, an alternate with that correction. Thank you. Uh, can I have a second, please? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. <clears throat> uh, moving on to item 4A. Commissioner Marjos, you want to? Uh, agenda item 4A, special permit permit application Rocky Hill Board of Education proposing a 17.25 square foot programmable scrolling LED changeable copy sign as part of a brick monument sign to replace the existing sign in the student drop-off lane at Rocky Hill High School located at 50 Chapin Avenue in R20 residential zone district ID 09-714. Right. Can I have a okay? I would. I would move to deny without prejudice this application. For well, I'll, I'll give my reasons later after a second. Can I have a second, please? Second. All right, um, Commissioner. Okay. Um, well, I don't see the the necessary necessity of a sign like this in a residential neighborhood. The high school has been there for, I don't know, 30 years or so. And we've, we've gone all these years without it. As was noted by some of the people from the public, all the students and parents get notices, notifications by other means. And most, I'd say 90% of the activities that would be advertised on here are school activities which would mean that the students are, are aware of it before the, the notice would go up on this sign. Also, uh, this is a high school. I don't know that we would, we've got plenty of locations around town where we talk about town activities. This should be, if it were, if it were to be put up eventually, then this should be confined only to high school activities, not just general activities around town, you know, like swap meet or flea market or whatever, just, but anyway, and in looking at the um, special permit criteria, item B1, the design elements of the proposed development would be attractive and suitable in, suitable in relation to the site characteristics, the style of other buildings in the immediate area and the existing and probable future character of the neighborhood in which this is located. As we've heard from the public, and this is my opinion too, this is a residential area. A flashing sign is not suitable for a residential area. And um, my, um, I shouldn't express my personal opinion, but I'm a light freak. And I feel bad for Mr. Poro, who's going to have to look at this thing 24 hours a day right across the street. But anyway, and then as far as the special permit criteria, B3, 
The proposed use or activity shall have no adverse effect on the neighboring area resulting from the use of signs, exposed artificial lights, colored lights of any nature, flashing lights, and I'll leave out the loudspeakers and noise making. These, a lighted sign in this area is just inappropriate, and that's the reason for my motion to deny. What I would recommend is that the Board of Education meet with representatives of the neighborhood and come up with a suitable alternate to this sign and get and get their input before they just decide to, to put up a sign like this. And those are my comments. All right, thank you. Um, motion of the se seconder, do you have uh, comments? Commissioner Agliaco seconded it. Nope, I'm, that wasn't me. I think it was. Oh, me. I seconded it. I seconded it. Oh, so you you have? I mean, that's. Yeah, I I, I think I, I think our intent when we updated the signage regulations not too long ago was pretty clear, and and it, and our vision and what we're with, where we where our heads were when we put those regs together is in section seven point C point three point three. Now, we, we made it very clear that electronic messaging signs are not permitted in the town center or waterfront districts, but there's a reason for that. We're trying to create a character to those neighborhoods. So we, we're consciously making a decision that EMC signs in those areas take away from the character. Um, it would be an incompatible use. Uh, of course, we got an electronic messaging sign in the town center. Um, I think that was there, though, before we updated the regs. And then we say that, that EMCs are permitted in commercial and regional commercial districts. Again, another insight to our vision about where we think these signs could possibly go. Um, and anything after that is special permit by exception to meet these standards in the special permit criteria. And as Alan stated, um, this this doesn't meet that criteria. It's not a compatible use. Um, it affects the character of the neighborhood. There's a couple other issues, um, and uh, and so I, I, I for that reason I, I feel that uh, this is not part of the, what we envisioned would would pan out in our planning and zoning regulations when we implement them and that uh, this would not be a, a suitable use uh, at this specific location, right, right exact location where it is. Um, something farther away or different part of the property that is possible, but, but this is just one of these scenarios that uh, adjacent to residential properties um, doesn't, seem, doesn't seem to align with the criteria. Oh, that's it. All right. Uh, thank you. Anyone else who would like to comment? Commissioner Gliga? Yeah, my only concern would have been um, it, one of the issues was it being parallel to the street. I think it'd be a, a safety concern. Um, <gasps> cars driving, you would have to be pretty much on top of the sign before you could actually read it. So I think it would be a safety concern as well as a distraction. Um, I kind of like the idea of the of the one sided sign, leaving the message board toward the school, um, but that's just that was just again an opinion. That's all I got. Thank you, um, Commissioner Drapal. I think my fellow commissioners have given uh, this committee way more than enough answers to what, what, how we're gonna vote. So I'm just gonna say, let's vote. All right, so my, my comments would be, again, uh, similar to if, if there is a, another location where you can put it such a way that it faces the high school. Uh, because if, if, the, if this message board is for high school students and parents and teachers uh, and administrators, uh, probably it would make sense that it phase 
towards the school somewhere. And, and as Ron said, uh, probably northern side um, of, of, the, uh, of the new monument where, which, where it is proposed right now, uh, at the entrance on, uh, on the parking side, uh, if, uh, if there is a corner that you pick and, and if it's facing towards uh, the students uh, or even on the south side, I don't know if there is any place where uh, you know, it faces students coming in or coming in, uh, that might be another location. But I think I agree, uh, the safety and distraction is, is something that uh, is paramount because the students are still learning to drive and, um, you know, it causes panic in the morning while everybody is coming in uh, during peak time. So I think that that's, that's something uh, should be addressed. Um, and again, as, as uh, Commissioner Mahoz said, maybe you know, talk to residents you know, and, and see if uh, one side only works. You know? So if, if the message is not showing up on Chapman Avenue uh, you know, and it's only towards the, the high school, maybe that's, that's an alternative you know, a solution, a win-win solution. Uh, having said that, uh, I'm going to ask for- Can I just votes. make one more comment, please? Yes. I think it's really important that the Board of Education speak to the residents with a proposed, what their next proposed plan might be um, prior to coming to this commission. So at least we have some input from the people that actually live there regarding the next sign proposal. Right. And, and, and I agree. And, and I'll just also point out one, one point. And uh, I know Commissioner Robbins talked about the intent of the signage. Uh, what, what, I, what I would say to that is uh, there's a reason why we have special permit allowance uh, if we did not want these signs uh, at certain locations, we would just have not given that option of special permit. Uh, every situation is different. Uh, this is high school. And I can't think of a reason right now that, an, uh, that they may have an emergency or an opportunity where they have to notify and, and they put those things on, on the sign. Um, you know, it's it's different from a commercial business where commercial businesses, you know, uh, versus a school. Because of the times we live in, we, we don't know if there is any reason to publish something, um, you know, and and so, so I think um, I I understand, like you know, why there might be a need. And maybe you know, Ron, and when when they go back uh, and, and talk to BOE, they can talk more about that and and uh, you know beef up that that argument. Like you know, what else? Because this is a school, and and it's a different animal compared to other commercial businesses that we talked about, and we try to you know limit limit the uh, the, the signs. So having said that, I would like to, uh, you know, let's vote uh, all in favor of uh, the motion. Aye. 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 All right, any opposed? So the motion is 5-0, deny the application uh, without prejudice. Um, and, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, going to item 5A. Kim, any uh, zoning enforcement? Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things that you may have witnessed uh, recently is uh, 
some of the items at Stresca Farm, uh, albeit a few comparatively speaking, uh, albeit some of the items at the Straska Farm property at the corner of New Road and New Britain Avenue have uh, exited the property. Um, there have been um, trucks uh, lined up on, on New Road and uh, I believe 20 to 25 vehicles have actually left the property. Um, there was to have been a on-site walk for an RFP that Ray Carpentino put together with respect to cleaning up that property and having other vendors come and look at um, the property as far as where other items can be removed. But um, concerning one of the blighted properties in town um, that has had some major activity taking place on that property. Um, we are getting a lot of um, complaints about commercial vehicles in residential areas. Um, typically what happens is they're parked on private property. We have a town ordinance that now allows for parking on the streets. Uh, we had a time when parking wasn't allowed uh, overnight on the streets. So what has happened now is a lot of the commercial vehicles end up being parked on the public roadways. Um, with the impending snowstorm, now people are bringing their cars and their commercial vehicles back onto their properties. So we got a rash of uh, complaints about commercial vehicles uh, parked on residential properties. Um, so we're trying to tackle those. Uh, and we also have had complaints about uh, people um, having, um, whether it be cleaning a house out or uh, moving people bring in pods uh, or storage containers to their residential properties. They're doing renovation work. Um, and uh, if there's a building permit, um, they're allowed it for the life of the building permit uh, or otherwise you're allowed in a dumpster for a period of seven days. Um, if you're doing just a house cleaning, uh, house cleanup. Uh, so we're getting, we're seeing a lot more of those coming. Uh, probably a late fall cleanup and people are being home. So they're doing more projects in their, their home. So that's what we've been seeing a lot of. Lately. All right, thank you. Um, going to item 5B, minor modifications. Are there any? Uh, we do not have any minor modifications. All right, item six, communications. Um, I did receive a copy of a letter. It was addressed to the town manager, John Mayer. It is from Frank Morse, uh, that's uh, M-O-R-S-E. He is the Republican town chairman. Uh, it should be noted that um, at the town council meeting, um, there was an action taken to uh, actually modify the positions of some of the people on the commission in that Guy Dupo had previously been uh, seated and appointed as an alternate member and Thomas Roybal uh, was seated and appointed as a regular member. Uh, due to um, his, Thomas Roybal's current um, employment situation uh, and the fact he's away on a period of time, um, they switched the appointments uh, and that was acted on at the last council meeting. So Guy Dupo is now serving as the regular member and Thomas Roybal is now serving as the alternate member. In light of, in light of this, um, I know uh, Tom Roybal or Commissioner Roybal was the secretary. So I would like to have a motion and I believe we can do in this session, right? Um, to make Commissioner Drapo as the secretary? I'll second that. Well, who, who made the motion? Yeah. I, I, oh, motion. you would like a motion? Okay, I'll move that we appoint uh, Guy Drapo as a secretary. Thank you. Can I have a second? I'll second it. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. So 
So now I believe everything is official in terms of appointments and things. So um, uh, moving on to oh item. <laughs> uh, moving on to item seven, approved bills. We don't have bills. Item eight, can I motion motion? adjourn? Now I can do it. <laughs> Go ahead. I did. Okay. Can I have a second, please? Everybody shy to second me. Second. All right. <laughs> all right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All. Congratulations, guys. Be safe. Uh, you know, while plowing the snow. <laughs> <laughs>